Hi, I'm Meredith from Beatalon, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the Gatsby inspired necklace. What you need to make this project is a focal piece. This one is a beautiful flower from Cabela Designs. A button or similar clasp. I'm going to show you how to use the button to finish off this design. Some two-part epoxy. This Bead Fix two-part epoxy is great to use for this project. And what you'll use that for is to glue a rivoli or another stone into the middle of the focal piece. You'll also need 40 8 millimeter round stones and 46 millimeter round stones, some wire guardians, and some crimp beads. Here I'm using the Beadalon Antique Brass Color Wire Guardians and Crimp Beads. So to get started, you're going to cut six lengths of wire, two that are 10 inches. Two that are six inches. And two that are five inches. Now what we'll do is use the wire guardians and the crimp beads to attach them to the filigree. So you want to think about your placement. I like to put mine in these three holes right here. I find that those allow the necklace to lie most smoothly. And I do like to start with the longest first. So first you will string on one crimp bead and one wire guardian. In order to get your wire guardian through the hole in your filigree, you might need to use your chain nose pliers and just open it up a little bit. I'm going to attach this in that topmost hole that I chose before. And after I've done that, then I need to come in with my chain nose pliers and just very gently squeeze the two corners of the wire guardian back shut. Then I'll put my crimp bead into place and use my crimping pliers to crimp that bead. Now in this design, the crimp beads are actually part of the design. So I'm not going to be using any crimp covers. So now I've attached the longest bead wire on the topmost holes in the filigree. And I'm going to go ahead and now do the shortest wire in the second hole in the filigree. So again, I'll take my shortest wire, I'll string on one crimp bead and one wire guardian. And I remember from last time that I need to open my wire guardian just a little bit to get it to fit over the filigree. And I'm going to slide that into that middle spot right there. Let's see if I got it. Yep, I got it this time. And I'm going to go ahead with my chain nose pliers and just gently squeeze the ends of that wire guardian together and go ahead and crimp that crimp bead. I'm going to do this again on the other side and then use the medium length wire on that bottom filigree and then I'll be ready to string my beads. So now I've attached all six of my wires to the filigree focal piece. You can see the longest one is first and that's what's going to go around your neck that we'll attach the clasp to. Then we have the shortest ones in the middle and the medium ones on the bottom. So now we're ready to start stringing. So what I'll do is I'll start stringing on the longest wire first with the eight millimeter round crystals. And my pattern is going to be one crimp bead, one crystal, 
one crimp bead, one crystal, and repeat that until it's the length that I want it to be. And since I already have my crimped crimp bead here, I'm going to go ahead and string up one crystal and a crimp bead. and a crystal and a crimp bead and I'm going to repeat that with 20 crystals on one side and then 20 crystals on the next side. And here what I've done is just tucked that wire in to my first couple of beads so I don't need to trim it and I'm just going to go ahead and keep stringing. I've gone ahead and strung my pattern up on both sides and alternating crimp bead, eight millimeter crystal, crimp bead, eight millimeter crystal all the way around, ending with a crimp bead and I have secured it with a bead stopper just so that my beads don't fall off while I do the next step. And now it's time to string up the beads on that middle shortest wire. So once again, that crimp bead becomes my first bead in my pattern and I'm gonna go ahead and string up eight six millimeter beads alternating with a crimp bead in between. So I'm going to do one six millimeter crystal, one crimp bead, and then continue that pattern to the end and go ahead and do that on the same corresponding wire on the other side. Before I get started, I always like to tuck my wire ends in. And away we go. After I've strung up my alternating design on that middle wire, it's now time to attach it to the long strand. So using this last crimp bead, as the crimp bead to attach it. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, and attach this between the fifth and sixth bead on my design. So I'll string back through that crimp tube, back through one of the six millimeter crystals and use my chain nose pliers just to pull that tight. You don't want it to be too tight because this, the design of this necklace really has a nice fluid motion to it, but you don't want all that wire showing. So I'm just going to shimmy the crimp bead down and pull it tight until I have it the way that I want it. That looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and crimp that crimp bead down. And then I'm going to just cut that extra bit of wire close to that bead and tuck the end in if I don't get it quite tight enough. I can go back in and just get that little edge off. And I'm going to go ahead and do that same step on the other side. So you can see our necklace is starting to come together really nicely and the next step is to do that same pattern with the alternating crimp beads and crystals on the last wire on each side. This time you're going to do a total of 12 six millimeter beads and 12 crimp beads. So we'll start here with our crimp bead and go ahead just like we did with the other ones. String up a crystal and a crimp bead and a crystal and a crimp bead and we'll continue this pattern until we end with a crimp bead and go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I have gone ahead and strung up both sides of the last wire on my design and it is time to attach it to the long wire. So just like we did in this step, 
we're going to count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beads, and we're going to attach it between the seventh and the eighth bead around through the crimp bead, back through the crystal, and then I'll use my chain nose pliers to pull that wire through and tighten it up. And again, you want to make sure that it's not too tight and not too loose, so I'm going to carefully shimmy the crimp bead down and tighten up my wire until I have it just the way I want it. Looks good. My tails are tucked in on the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and take my crimping plier and come in here and crimp that bead. I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I've attached both sides of the medium size wire and you can see the design is really starting to take form now. The next step is to attach our clasp and the way I'm going to do this clasp is I'm going to use a button for one side and then the other side I'm going to make a loop with the crimp beads so it keeps a, a consistent color scheme and a consistent design scheme in my design. So the first side that I am going to attach will be the button and I already have my crimp bead here so I'll go ahead thread on that button come back through the crimp bead and through one of those eight millimeter round crystals. Pull it tight, but not too tight. Make sure I have a, a little bit of wiggle room in here for my crystals to lie nicely. And come in here with my crimping pliers and go ahead and crimp that bead down. Give it a little tug to make sure that I did it the right way and snip that wire off. This next side will take a little bit of finessing because you want to make sure that your loop is big enough so that your button can fit through, but not too big that your button slides through while you're wearing it. So I'm going to go ahead and string up a bunch of crimp beads onto the wire and then make sure that my loop is the right size to fit around my button. I've strung up several crimp tubes onto that end wire and I'm going to go ahead and string back through the first one closest to the bead and back through that bead to hide the tail and I'm going to check my fit and again we don't want this to be too loose and we don't want it to be too tight either I think I got it pretty good so it's going to hold that button in place, but it's not going anywhere once I have it on my neck. And the great thing about this design is that the crimp beads are part of the design. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp down right there, that last crimp tube before the bead. Make sure that all of my tails are tucked in and there's enough wiggle room in here that my crystals aren't really tight. And I'm just going to double check one last time to make sure that that button and that loop fit and that looks great. The last step is we're going to come in here and glue the Rivoli stone into the center of our filigree. To attach the Rivoli to the center filigree component, I'm going to use the Bead Fix Epoxy. And to use it, you want to make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area and pop the uh, first tube with the cap. There's a little popper in there to pop the foil. And you want to make sure that you squeeze out everything that's in the tube. The important thing about the two-part epoxy is that it's a one-to-one -one ratio to make sure that it hardens up and it holds appropriately. So we're going to squeeze everything out of that first tube and then go ahead and do the same thing with the second tube. Well ventilated. And because this is going to harden up 
you want to use something disposable to mix those two parts together. I'm using just a pen cap that I found in the office. You want to make sure that you mix everything up really, really good so that both of those two parts have a chance to activate each other. Now once I have these nice and mixed, I'm just going to apply a small amount into the center of that filigree component. And I'll do it slowly and kind of build up layer by layer so it doesn't get super messy. And you want to work pretty fast when you're using the epoxy because it will set up in about 30 minutes. But I find that that gives you, if you plan in advance, just enough time to get your project done. So I'm going to drop that in and it doesn't feel like it is taking it in the back. So I'm going to pop it out and you can see it just got kind of a little bit on the back. So I'm going to add just a little bit more and really build up those layers. And I'll also add a little bit more on the back of the Rivoli. And now I'm going to very carefully pop that back in. And in about a half an hour, it should be cured. And then I'll wait another 24 hours for it to dry completely. And then I will be able to wear my beautiful new necklace. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you make a Gatsby inspired necklace of your own, please be sure to post it on the Beetle on Facebook page. Thanks so much for watching.